Yo, what's going on fam? This is Raul from QBN Kennels. Make sure to do this and then do that so that we could get on to the topic. So this particular week, Dan Perez from Perez House of Bullies actually made a post that caught my attention. He said why it is pretty much that we're hung up still on color when we should be looking at structure, temperament, and other things. And I definitely have to agree with him 100%. I mean, even though I'm not against people liking a particular color on a dog, um, with all that being said, I do think that breeding solely based on color is not the way to go. I mean, if you're calling yourself a real breeder or you're wanting to be a real breeder, you don't base yourself solely on color. That's part of the big problem that's going on with our bully community and our particular breed is that we're breeding into faults because we're actually prioritizing color above structure and conformation. Structure and conformation should be the things that we're looking at. You can't sit here and call yourself a serious breeder and only talk to me about color. So the way I, I see it is, is rather simple. Um, I see it as a 5% uh, variable into whatever formula it is that you're trying to formulate for your dogs. So for me, that 5%, if I got everything else on a dog, that 5% is pretty much meaningless to me. Okay, uh, if the dog's got correct structure, correct front, correct rear, correct top line, correct, you know, rear angulation, so on and so forth. Okay, color then definitely takes a back seat to everything else. Now, of course, like anyone else, if I have two dogs that are exactly the same and are exactly conformed, then at that point, yeah, why not? I'm going to go ahead and choose color. Okay, but you can't sit here and call yourself... Um, a serious breeder and and only breed you know a, a particular color and and that's it because that's what you like um, don't get me wrong I respect the fact that you want to do that but in my eyes you're just not a serious breeder okay once I catch your dogs with with you know one repetitive fault maybe two major faults and you're out here calling yourself a breeder to me if you're not improving on these faults and you keep breeding into them to me you know I just can't look at you, you know, as a serious breeder. And definitely uh, breeding to just color would definitely, um, you know, make me look at you like you're, you're not a serious breeder. And, and when I say just me, I'm really not speaking about just me. I'm talking about the breeding community. I'm talking about other serious breeders out here that are looking to improve the breed, that are looking to improve confirmation on the breed. It doesn't mean that they don't have their look. It doesn't mean that they're not putting their stamp on it. But it does mean that they're breeding healthy, uh, as correct dogs as they can. Now, fam, I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying, okay? Because there's not a yard out here that's got nothing but perfect dogs, starting with mine. This way, uh, we, we could just quelch all, you know, uh, mistaken um, or confused message that I'm shooting out there. Now, when you're starting out, okay, just like when I started out, okay? you're gonna have certain faults you're starting out that's you know that's the essence of it now you got you know to 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 learn how to breed those faults out of your dogs and to make your dog a better a better dog or more conformed to what the breed standard is is was is what breeding is all about okay and in the order of priority okay color comes in my opinion dead last okay dead last why rather simple you know I ask you as as a young upcoming breeder or somebody has been breeding what would you rather breed out of your dogs east west or the fact that you want to put a particular color on them okay if you don't mind having you know the perfect color dog in your eyes with east west with high rear with an underbite then honestly you shouldn't be out here breeding you know, fam, I give it to you straight. I tell you what it is. You need to come out here. You need to start learning breed standard. I get it every single day. I get 100 messages. Hey, you know, I've been seeing your videos or I've been seeing your dogs, man. They're amazing, blah, blah, blah. I appreciate the support, okay? But what I like to see from the majority of these new up-and-coming uh, breeders or people that want to get into breeding is, you know, uh, how do I get into genetics? 
how do I get into improving the breed or, or, or how do I get my dogs to get to the breed standard? Those should be the questions that need to be getting asked and I'm not getting enough of. And again, I'm not necessarily, you know, saying all this to, you know, to, to, to come in that angle where I'm being arrogant or I'm being mean or anything like that. I'm not, man. I'm just letting you know the current culture uh, that the bully world is in um, where we want these designer dogs and thus we are willing to, you know, have a dog that's walking around with east west or high rear because he's got a pretty coat um at least to a breeder like me that's just unsatisfactory you don't need to be out here breeding man i mean seriously um if you call yourself a breeder and you're breeding based on color do us all a favor and just hang it up move on out because you're part of the problem and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm not only speaking for me or for QBNK. I'm sure I'm speaking to, you know, for most of the breeders out here, that that, that are actually trying to improve the breed and improve the the breed standard and the stock in their yard. You know, when you're starting out, and you know, you buy a dog from this yard and you you buy a dog from that yard, and you bring them in. At first, you think they're excellent. They're great. I don't care you know, how much studying you've been doing, there's gonna be some things you're just not gonna catch right then and there. Or maybe some things that are gonna take time before they show up, okay? Your dog might not look like he's east-west at two months old, but guess what? At six, he's starting to show east-west. It's not the end of the world, fam. And these are not the people that I am necessarily criticizing directly. My criticism comes when your dog starts showing east-west and instead of you planning from that point on how it is that you're gonna breed that out, whether it means that you're gonna to need to uh, do an outcross or, 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 or maybe even breed to the very same female that you bought because you saw this problem coming. If you're not thinking in this manner, there's a problem, okay? We got too many people out here that got a dog that looks like a damn seal and they're happy and content with that because he's got the, the right color and it's on point. Um, I can tell you right now, fam, that's, that's going to lead you to, to pretty much uh, a disastrous result. Uh, it's going to lead you to having a litter of eight pups and having to keep six of them, okay? Because I don't care how much, you know, people uh, want to support you and back you up. People have eyes and ears, okay? And people could pretty much look up breed standard just like you can. What I don't understand is how easy it is to look up breed standards and why it is that these up and coming breeders or, or people that even have been breeding for a while don't look them up or completely ignore them. They're there. They're not going anywhere, fam. And the bottom line is uh, you can sit here and buy a famous dog's, you can buy a famous dog's son or daughter, like I see a lot of times. And then, you know, you got this person showing up you know, like having this dog's daughter or son all of a sudden makes them acceptable to, to the breeding community, uh, community uh, as if though, you know, this dog is above and beyond these other dogs that are conformed. Fam, that's not the way it works. Now, if you want to be part of that popularity contest, go right ahead. It works for that. But if you want to be taken seriously by people that are actually breeding, studying the breed, trying to improve what it is that they got in the yard, fam, you know, there, there's, there's nothing better than to actually, you know, put in the hard work, learn how to, you know, breed faults out of certain, you know, out of your dogs and improve your yard, improve your stock. This is what, you know, improving the standard is all about. But a lot of us just want to do a quick shortcut. You just buy a dog that's got this color, has got that. Just put them together. It doesn't matter what fault they got. It's going to be automatic money. Fam, it doesn't always work that way, even for the people that are doing the popularity contest. Just straight up. I mean, I've seen plenty of them that have had, you know, a litter of 10, and they end up eating eight of them pups because they only were able to sell two. So don't find yourself in that position. If you're gonna get into this, do it right from the get. Look to become clean and correct. Look to be conformed. Look to associate yourself with people that are actually dog people and not just hustlers out here that are trying to sell the dog, fam. Anybody can sell you a dog. If it looks pretty, and if you don't know anything about dogs, you don't know anything about faults, anybody can sell you a dog. Be better than that. Improve the breed. All right, fam. Hey, I ain't gonna give you, you know, uh, much more. 
just want to be able to touch up on that topic today. Uh, this has been QBNK, and we're going to call it peace out.